<laughs> All right, two battlers, you know what it is. J Devin back at it with another gold battling video. I've been waiting so long for this. So long. The time the time well, the time already came. I've already done the sets. I've already used it. I used my Elite Fast TM to get Thundershock on Zapdos. And I double moved it and ran it in GBL sets. So yeah, that's what we're gonna look into in this video. You've probably seen several creators already make videos. Um, on Zapdos, but this this is gonna be my video on it. I feel like it's a little special just because I've I feel like I've been waiting for it for so long. Like this, this is this is gonna be good. This is gonna be good. And there it is in the battle party. From what you can see, mine mine is lucky. It's not gonna have great PvP IVs. Not at all. It's it's it, its IV spread is actually 13, 13, 13. So it, not really good at all, honestly. Um, that's okay. Eventually what I want to do is have this one powered up in the future for Ultra League unless I get a better one somehow before then. The reason I don't really care about the IVs on it right now is because my ultimate goal is to have a great PvP IV Shadow Zapdos for the Great League. I definitely do want the Shadow. Um, unfortunately, I, I did not TM away Frustration on my Shadow Zapdos, and I didn't because it has a terrible IV spread from, from what we're about to see here. So here's the Shadow that I had, and yeah, that's, <laughs> oh, that's not good. That's no bueno. The first thing I want to do, obviously, before we start looking into the battles, explaining the team and whatnot, is I did start working on that project about tracking um, the battles, what teams I'm facing, what leads I'm facing, whether I'm winning or losing the battles, and what is my win or my loss condition. And really, it's just for data's sake, but um, you know, visually, as I battle, and if I have to change my team a bit, it gives me a guide rather than you know just thinking off the top of my head. It's like, okay, this is literally what I have been facing in the past few sets. Like, it's it's been consistent. But again, back back to Zap Zapdos and the team for this video, which was this. This is the team, and you know, I, again, I started to change it because I felt like. The team just wasn't good, but it, this really, this literally came down to how I was playing the team and how I was utilizing the Pokemon and their, you know, their talents, their characteristics, their bulk, their move sets, their coverage, and really just, you know, am I being a good battler? You know, am I being a good Pokemon trainer and trusting my Pokemon and knowing my Pokemon, right? So to just dive right into it for this team, this team. This team is really interesting. Um, it might be pretty familiar, actually. You've probably seen it before in that video, which was on King's channel. Actually, I thought it was kind of funny because <laughs> I had already put this team together and then I, I started to have doubts. I always do it before I even do my sets. I look thoroughly into the team, into the matchups, into their synergy, etc. And I built the team and I was like, okay, you know what? Let me see what other people have, what they're using for Zapdos to see if they're successful with it and I found a few videos. I watched Pokey AKs as well too if you haven't watched it. It's right there. Go ahead and give it a look. Definitely worth it. has his personal flair and spice with it with his uh, with his Mawile. So that's, that, that's going to be a good way to run it but I feel like I, I want the good ID Shadow Mawile eventually before I can do a team like that justice. So I, I looked into this team a lot and the reason I ended up building it was because of these characteristics and you know sometimes when you take a loss that you have no control over, um, it can be pretty frustrating because you're like, you know, I knew this team, I had this plan and it just didn't work. And then, then you get into your own head, right? And you forget why you built the team and what the function of the team is and how each Pokemon can contribute to their role within the team, right? So that is more so what I want to focus on in the simple bullet points for this team. Um, obviously, to start off with Umbreon, it has amazing bulk. You, you should you should definitely know this already if you're into PvP, but if you don't, it is literally built to be a tank in Great League. It has a low attack stat. It, it was, It's a Pokemon that's literally built for Great League, okay? It has a low attack stat, it has a very high defense, and a kind of high stamina. It has a very high stamina. On the, For example, on the perfect PvP IV spread for Umbreon in Great League, if you have it, that would be a zero attack 15 defense 15 stamina um, but with that iv spread you're going to be able to hit a higher level obviously which would be level i think 27 and a half and that gives it a stat product total 2539 which is 
that, that's up there. That's that's one of the tanks of the tanks. Um, mine that I use, as you can see, it's not 1500 combat power like the perfect PvP IV spread would be. Um, I believe mine's a, a rank two. I don't remember what the actual rank number is, but um, I'm missing one defense point. So my my Umbreon is um, 0, 14, 15. It is a flower crown though, so it has some swag. I don't right now have the PvP IV spreads put up in the video or the move sets, um, but they're all they're all the standard move sets for the most part. So on the Umbreon, I'm running Snarl, Foul Play, and Last Resort, the Community Day exclusive move, Last Resort. Um, Dark Pulse has a lot of valid play on an Umbreon in the Great League, um, but overall for consistency and lower energy cost, and also potentially being able to work the switch timer if I need to, which I feel like combined with Umbreon's bulk is one of the main characteristics and why I love Umbreon as a lead specifically with this team, that is the reason that I went with foul play. Because if they reach a charge move before I do and they happen to KO because I have Dark Pulse and not foul play, then I lost a match where I potentially could have won, right? So um, again though, that's, that's just the way that I'm playing Umbreon. I just want to use it that way. I said this before, this might be a longer video, but I want to get a little more in depth rather than just Here's the team, here's the move set. Save a shield, swap this, and then you're going to win. Again, you know, it's not, it's really not that simple. For some people that works, but what I want to do is really to get more in depth to explain the function of the team, how I built the team, why I built the team the way it is, etc. So yeah, it's bulkiness, obviously, and it's typing are what makes it an amazing lead. And I put fallback plays as the third bullet point, um, which brings me to the point of, if it is a lost lead, I can use it I can use it later on in the battle as a cushion, right, or as a sacrificial swap, or I can just use it as a distraction. To put that in simpler terms, Umbreon is a cushion for plays, and it gives you a lot of wiggle room for your flexibility in the battle. It gives you breathing room. Picks like Shift Tree are amazing, but if you're in a bad matchup, you don't have as much breathing room, you don't get as much time to think, because Shift Tree is really squishy, right? Really squishy. So yeah, that's why Umbreon. Now, Zapdos, obviously, just because it's it's Zapdos, I'm Team Instinct, but it's it's functioning role um, against the Great League meta as a as an anti-meta Pokemon. Um, I honestly don't know how other creators feel, and and hopefully I don't get totally roasted for saying this, but I feel like Zapdos can function if it's used correctly. It can function so well as an anti-meta Pokemon that it's basically meta. I feel like Zapdos is is a meta pick, but. That's because it's such a strong anti-meta pick, if that makes sense. So the the damage output, if shields are down, or if I save shields, the damage output to Registeel and to Azumarill, to any grass, to a shift tree, to a Meganium, to fighters too. And that's because the move set, by the way, I'm sorry. The move set I'm running, obviously, since I used my my Elite Fast TM is the Legacy Thundershock. For the first four and a half sets, I was running the move set of Thundershock Thunder and drill peck and, th and that does bring up something pretty specific that i want to talk about briefly there are people who prefer thunder because it is only five more energy and it gives 10 more damage which is huge it's very considerable for the first access of the charge move it is going to take just as many thunder shocks as thunderbolt does so it's almost like free extra damage at least for the first one so yeah to compare and contrast just really quick the move thunder and the move thunderbolt Okay, so Thunder is 6,400 and Thunderbolt is 55,490. So again, 60 to 100, 55 to 90. An important metric when you're considering the charge moves that you're going to use on your Pokemon in Pokemon Go PvP is something called damage per energy. So what that is basically going to tell you is overall how efficient that move is. They're both pretty close in terms of damage per energy. Thunder is a 1.66 damage per energy, which is not amazing, but it's also not terrible at all. And Thunderbolt is actually just a little bit worse than Thunder for damage per energy. It is 1.63. Now you calculate damage per energy, obviously, for the example of Thunder by literally just dividing the damage by the energy. So 100 to 60 gives you 1.66. So you would you would assume, okay, just because it, it's at, it's more efficient, it's only five more energy and it gives us a whole 10 more damage, then Thunder is going to be the best move, right? That's the move you always want to go for. Um, my stance at this point, even for the non-shadow, is no. Um, it's kind of against that 
And that might just be because of the way that I play Zapdos and the teams that I faced. So I'm not necessarily saying that like, if you're going to you know invest in a Zapdos, you have to run it this way. I'm just giving you my experience and what I honestly think about it. So even if it's technically a worse move in terms of damage per energy, I advocate for Thunderbolt on Zapdos, whether it is Shadow or not a Shadow Zapdos. The, the very simple reason behind that is because yes, you can reach, you can reach them both on the first axis at the same time, but I, I often found that I would find myself in a one-to-one -one shield situation against whether it is Registeel or Azumarill, which is exactly what Zapdos is supposed to be able to counter. And when I was running Thunder, I was not able to reach that, that second Thunder in enough time to actually fire it off and win the matchup after the shield is down, which made a lot of matchups and win conditions very bait dependent. And I was taking losses because of that when I really didn't need to. So. You know, again, I'm not saying people who vote for Thunder or who advise that you use Thunder are incorrect or wrong, not by any means at all, but I literally just started winning when I TM Thunder to Thunderbolt because I was able to access the Thunderbolt in time and with Zapdos' crazy attack stat, it still got the job done and I won the game. So again, for me personally, Thunderbolt, not Thunder, Thunderbolt. And again, now that we've talked about that, to circle back to the first bullet point on the Zapdos, is um, anti-meta. I feel like it functions better as an anti-meta pick. It functions more consistently as an anti-meta pick with Thunderbolt because you, you need that consistency, especially with how squishy it is and the fact that you already need to save, you know, at least one, if not two shields for Zapdos. You, 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 need, you need the Thunderbolt, okay? I'm um, obviously the second bullet point on Zapdos from what you can see ends games. It, it literally does. You've probably already seen it. You're going to see it here in a minute once we go over the set. Um, but yeah, I, I did... I did underline and all caps needs shields because I always found when I did not save a shield, like it's it's in my data, it's in my notes, when I did not save a shield for the Zapdos, I would still end up losing the battle. Even if it's potentially, you know, a positive matchup, just because I didn't save a shield and Zapdos is just that squishy enough, I lost because I didn't have a shield. So yeah, needs needs a shield, at least one. Uh, but then obviously Deoxys, it can be pretty self-explanatory. Um, he is an amazing safe swap for the most part. Um, in this team specifically though, you really want Deoxys to be able to function as an anti-Altaria. Okay, so if you see Altaria in the lead against Umbreon in the two shield scenario, you're, you are going to win. So you don't need to swap out of that. That was my mistake, I believe, in that set, in the one battle that I lost in that set. I swapped out when I didn't need to, I think. Umbreon can technically be an Altaria counter in and of itself because in even grounds, it is just going to win against it. Obviously, if you're at a disadvantage in terms of shields or energy, then it's probably going to lose, uh, but that's why you open with it, right? Because a lot of times people will either save Altaria for the back, fallback play, or they're going to be leading with the Altaria. So and keep in mind too, that is actually assuming average IVs on the Umbreon. You don't even need great PVP IVs to do that. Um, so there's that condition. Keep that in mind, you can win against Altaria in the lead. But again, like I said, for those battlers and for those competitors who have their Altaria in the back or use it as a safe swap, for example, um, Deoxys needs to be that counter. So to keep it simple, if the Umbreon does not already counter and get rid of the Altaria, for example, if they lead with it, then make sure you get that Deoxys lined up against the Altaria to do the job because Zapdos does not want to see an Altaria. And as you can see too, the final point that I have on the Deoxys is Psycho Boost. So the moveset you want to run, the moveset I feel like you need to run if you're running this team this way is Counter, Rock Slide, and then Psycho Boost. You do not have Thunderbolt, you have Zapdos for, for the Azumarill. So Counter, Rock Slide for the Altaria, and then Psycho Boost is basically going to be bait potential and or last minute potential against several things if you find yourself in a rough spot. It's low energy cost move and even with the self attack debuff that it'll put on the Deoxys, much like the Umbreon pick in the lead, that can potentially help you work the switch timer, right? If you need to find yourself in a different matchup to line up Zapdos correctly to be against 
either a Registil or an Azumarill for an example, or even a Meganium with a shield left. That is why Psycho Boost it gives you that extra working of the, the switch clock potential. It, it works, trust me, trust me. Psycho Boost, not Thunderbolt. Let the Thunderbolt go for this team. You don't need it. So that explains, I guess, my main points for each pick, why I lead with Umbreon, why you are going to be swapping with the Oxus. The main function, TLDR, they basically work perfectly with each other to be the delivery service for Zapdos. They can put, if you work them correctly in their synergy with each other against the entire meta, um, there's not much that Umbreon and Deoxys together can't handle. It's a, it's a Zapdos sandwich. If you do it correctly, you're going to end up seeing a Registeel at the end, or you are going to end up seeing an Azumarill at the end. You know, again, it's easy for me just to say that, but I feel like I really grasped that and why I formed the team this way. I feel like I really started to catch on to it in the last set, which again was the best one. Um, it could have been a 5-0, and but I made a really bad decision in game two, which we will go over even the loss I had in game two. We're still going to go over it. Um, and then, yeah, I can kind of demonstrate the team. I really do like this team, honestly. I think I'm going to keep running it for a little bit. All right, so here we go to take a look at the battles so we can actually see what I'm talking about in action. For some people, this is going to make more sense than what I try to explain. Obviously, this first matchup was very self-explanatory. They led Haunter and we lead with Umbreon, so that is a hard loss for them in that lead. They need to swap out, and fortunately enough for us, it's going to be kind of an easy win, you know, pretty smooth sailing because they swapped into Deoxys into the Umbreon, which, that you know, Deoxys can win if Umbreon is at a shield or energy disadvantage, but they didn't shield the foul play, so now I can get the Umbreon out of there, just come in with my own Deoxys, and uh, just be a little aggressive with it, honestly. But again, you know, I know for a fact I have such a positive matchup for Haunter with Umbreon. I don't need to shield. And fortunately for enough, enough for us, it was a Psycho Boost. So I'm able to throw my own Psycho Boost at their Haunter that comes back in, uh, which grabs a shield. So now at this point, right, we are at a 2 to 1 shield advantage. And here is the Registeel that they swapped into from the Haunter because they don't want to see that Umbreon. And like I said, we are now in a position where these are the things that people like to close with. So this forces those picks to be locked in against the against the Zapdos. It's beautiful, dude. It's perfect. It's beautiful, honestly. I love the team so much. Um, and we're just going to do complete work against this Registeel. The battle is kind of at, at a point, though, where I don't feel like I want to you know, be too risky. But I know that the swap timer, as you can see, was about to run out and I caught them perfectly on that swap into the Haunter. I don't even think they were able to throw a charge. I don't even think they had one yet and shields were down so I just foul played it and then I just close with the Umbreon, GG's trainer. And as we get into the next game, from what you're about to see, this was really bad. I made a, a really bad call, a really bad play. They did lead with um, Altaria and they also ended up having Bastion on. So, <laughs> oh man. So what I did basically from what we're about to see, right? Like I said earlier, the Umbreon is going to defeat the Altaria in the lead. You don't need to swap out. For some reason, I decided I need to swap into Deoxys. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute, why I did that, but it's not it's not the same matchup from why I usually do that. Um, Altaria is a different Pokemon. So Altaria is gonna be able to do work. Technically Altaria beats Deoxys um, in the even shield scenario. So that was an absolutely terrible call. They shielded twice, even though I have two shields up. I'm I'm down my Deoxys, which one of, one of the pieces of bread from that sandwich to deliver Zapdos is gone. So I, again, I don't know why I did it, but that basically makes my whole strategy fall apart because I don't even know what they have past this Altaria. I might not have the support that I need at all to make it work. So, you know, at this point, I'm like, okay, I don't want to reveal the Zapdos. They can't know that I have the Zapdos. What do they have? It's Bastiodon. Yep. Concede. GG's. We're done. Remember, Umbreon can beat the Altaria in the lead. You don't, you don't need to swap. You don't need to swap. You don't. If anything, they're just going to lose the lead or they're going to swap themselves and then you can answer. So that was the loss. I don't know what they had in the back. I have a good feeling it was either a Mud Boy, a Zumarill, or potentially Meganium, which Zapdos could have been able to handle all of those. So 
GG's, we, we played that very wrong. So in this lead, this is a, a, a Swampert can put on a lot more pressure than other things can against the Umbreon, right? Just because the Hydro Cannon is so massive and if they bait correctly, you know, you don't want to take an Earthquake because then you can lose the matchup quicker than you thought you might have. But fortunately enough for me, against this trainer, they were just going straight Hydro Cannon. So again, I, you need to trust Umbreon, especially mine, the amazing bulk, and I have the almost perfect PvP IV spread. I knew, even though it looked like I had to shield it, I knew I did not have to shield. I would hang on by at least one HP and I would get that foul play. So now we've won the lead and we have two shields to their one shield and I've already matched up what we need to. I've matched up the Deoxys against the Altaria and at this point I'm still saying might be a little bit risky but right we, we're not locked in. We have a swap available. Um, I want to save the two shields potentially for Zapdos because again I, we still don't know exactly what they have in the back. That's why I did that but now we're at a two to zero shield so I don't care at that point anymore. I let the Deoxys go down. I'm going to come out with with Zapdos and pray that they do not have Pancake in the back. If they have Stunfisk, we lose. Look at that. Beautiful. It is Registeel. Again, like I said, trust the team. If you work Umbreon and Deoxys correctly in their synergy with each other against the current Great League meta, you will force either the Azumarill, the Registeel, and or the Meganium to be in the back at a shield disadvantage. That's literally what the strategy is, is forcing forcing Zapdos to just close. It's, it, it's beautiful. I think I already said that, but I'm, I mean, I'll probably keep saying it. It's beautiful. It's so freaking beautiful. Yeah, again, something else obviously besides having faith in the bulk of my Pokemon and how I know the team can function and why I built the team this way um, is I have a very bad habit especially in Go Battle League, of trying to bait opponents when I don't really need to. There's no need to bait sometimes, but I do anyways, and they, they call the bait. So sometimes, you know, don't just don't bait, just throw it. Um, that, that has started to help a lot too because then you can really use the Pokemon to their full potential and you don't put yourself at a, in a situation where you potentially end up in a shield disadvantage. It's too risky. Don't, don't try and BM people and bait all the time. Just throw the move. Um, foul play, obviously, this is not ideal. We're going to lose the lead, but I definitely do not want to lose swap advantage, which they just lost, and they also have no shields. So now you would assume at this point that this battle is kind of a given, but I knew right now, at this second, I knew as I was battling, I was like, oh, you know what? They led with the Shadow Victory Bell, and they have Deoxys. I guarantee you they have Bastiodon in the back. So since they're still switch locked at that moment, I had to bring out the Zapdos. I should have came in with the Zapdos in the first place. So it's was, it was technically a mistake on my part that I came in with the Zapdos after my own Deoxys. But again, I recognized the situation quick enough. I was able to fix it. Here's the Bastiodon. We can throw a Thunderbolt into his face. Um, and then because the way we worked it and we recognized the situation and this predictable team composition that people are still running, even though I counter it and win every single time, um, we're able to take the W. Now, as you can see, I'm being pretty greedy with my energy generation and my farming because we know they still have this victory bell. There it is. They swapped into it. We can immediately throw, not Thunderbolt, the Psycho Boost. Victory bell's gone. And then the Bastiodon is low enough. Even a debuff Psycho Boost is going to finish the job. GG's trainer. Yeah, I literally wrote in my notes. I said, just had to make sure that I didn't end up locked into Bastiodon with Zapdos. These teams are predictable. <laughs> and the last one, this is going to be a good one. In my notes, I said, this is not an easy win. Might be this set in the upload. It, li it literally is. I'm recording it right now. <laughs> yeah, this last one was a good one for sure. So we have a favorable lead, but you'll see You'll see how the match works out. Pretty, It's pretty interesting, honestly. So um, I'm waiting for them to swap. They basically have to. That is a terrible lead for them. Um, and they come in with the Registeel. So I could have thrown, honestly, what I had with the Umbreon, but here's the thing. I started to be a little too greedy with the shields and with my farming, which I'm trying to not do anymore, but especially against picks like Registeel, towards the beginning of the battle, do not try to be too greedy against a Registeel. You will definitely regret it because now I've already thrown this shield up, which then, you know, at this point in the battle, it's fine to throw it up like this, but I knew at this moment, the mistake I made is they switch lock themselves into the Registeel, why did I not just bring out the Zapdos then and there to own that Registeel and come out of that matchup with a shield advantage? 
Um, honestly, it's it, it's kind of fine, you know, because we don't know if they have an Azumarill in the back. It's possible they do. Um, since, since we've already talked about it, we know they have Altaria in the back, not Azumarill. But it's th that's what that's what made the matchup really tough is because I, I thought to myself, I'm like, oh no, if they have Azu in the back and I don't have a shield, it's going to Ice Beam me, right? Um, so I was freaking out. But again, fortunately enough for us, they have the Altaria in the back. I was able to come in quickly with the Deoxys to take that last shield that they had. We absolutely needed that last shield. And then we can basically close between these two Pokemon at this point. So here's why it was not an easy win. <laughs> Stop running Dazzling Gleam on your Altaria. I, st I still win. I will still win the matchup. You know, I, I guess if they, if they sandwich me and they force my lead Umbreon to close against the Altaria. I don't know how they would do that, but if they do, then Dazzling Gleam is super clutch. Um, but really though, why are people running Dazzling Gleam? Why? Did you use Dragon Pulse. GG's trainer. Oh! Well, it's not on stream, but this is recording. Pog! Sh <laughs> Shiny Snover! What? Savage season. Oh, I didn't hit the excellent. Please don't run. Please don't. That would suck. Boom. There it is. Let's go, dude. We got it. This is not the point of the video, but I will take... Oh, look at those IVs. I will take it. But again, that was it as far as the, the sets and the battles, the team, how it functions. Basically, the team is built to force Zapdos to be able to close on some of their BBML picks, whether that is going to be Altaria, Azumarill, Registeel, Meganium, Shift Tree, etc. If you save that shield, it can close on any and all of those picks. Um, you never want to see your Zapdos matched up, especially not locked in, but not matched up against a Stunfisk. A Stunfisk is an absolute wall. There's nothing that Zapdos is really going to be able to do. And remember, even if you lose the lead, this team is built to be able to recover from that. You are almost always going to be swapping Deoxys and going back and forth until you end up against one Pokemon with a shield advantage in the back with the Zapdos, which is going to close. You know, I don't think it's a really hard team to run um, because you have the cushion and the sandwich, right? The, the Umbreon and the Deoxys are the bread for the butter, which is the Zapdos. The Zapdos will will close. Just trust the bread and the butter will slide on through. And the last note to make, I'm going to go back to the, the move set on Zapdos. The last note I'd like to make on that is if you're going to use the Zapdos this way, if you're going to create a sandwich team and have Zapdos matched up against some BBML to close and to win the game, you want Thunderbolt. I would say if you're going to lead with Zapdos and or use Zapdos as a safe swap in a team composition, then you're probably going to want Thunder. Obviously from all those sets, I could have you know ranked up a, a lot more. I could have gained a lot more ELO points, but that the one to five before this last set just completely destroyed that. Again though, we still plussed with this team, even though we built it and we're kind of testing it as we were doing the GBL, um, but that's the team. I, I really love the team. I was excited to even make the video. Um, once I you know, really started to understand the team again and to see its true potential, if you trust the team and you build it right, this team is amazing. Honestly, I feel like, especially in the last set, the only reason that I lost is because I played the team incorrectly. Against all the teams up to this point that I have faced, I faced all kinds of different teams with this team. There has not been a team that I have simply not been able to handle, except for one time where you know, again, because this team is built to close with the Zapdos. I kind of build closing teams now that I think about it. Yeah, they, they were closing with the Stunfisk. And I, you know, as we know, I try and close with the Zapdos. And Zapdos basically just tickles the Stunfisk. Because Zapdos can't do anything. So that's really been the only thing that's blocked this team. Is if they get a Stunfisk matched up against your Zapdos. And they're able to eliminate the Umbreon and the Deoxys from the picture. Then that's GG's. Even if you have two shields, it's... And again, remember, if you try this team, I highly recommend you you use the the highest ranked Umbreon that you have possible just for that extra bulk, right? Because if I didn't have this amazing PvP IV Umbreon, specifically when I did not shield against that Swampert, 
um, and I wanted to save the two shields. If I didn't have amazing PvP IVs, then I knew I would not have been able to tank that Hydro Cannon, and I would have had to invest that shield to win the Switch Advantage and the Shield Advantage. So the great PvP IV Umbreon might almost be necessary if you're going to use this team this way. Um, but really, you know, it just depends on the teams that you get matched up against, to be honest. But uh, the main point is trust trust the bulk of Deoxys and Umbreon to save those shields. Don't be afraid to save the shields for the Zapdos. Yeah, that's it. As far as, as far as the team, as far as the videos and the battles and explaining everything, that's it. So if you'd like to try this team, if you haven't already, and you'd like to use this team, again, I really do recommend it. I absolutely love it if used correctly. It's very consistent. It will close on basically everything except a Stunfisk. But if you have any questions about the team of, you know, what, what would I do if I run into this lead or if they swap with this, etc. If you want any advice on the team, absolutely throw it down in the comments below. I will reply as soon as realistically that I can. Or you can also just hit me up on Twitter, which is um, at OGJDevin. That's also linked in the description below. Along with my Twitch, by the way, if you didn't already know, I do stream live on Twitch currently every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday um, for what we call Dice Cup. But sometimes I'll also just jump on to do my, D my GBL sets. But if I'm trying to develop an amazing team like this, um, then sometimes I'll just do them off stream. Yeah, give a follow again. Link in the description below. It is twitch.tv slash jdevinlive for all things PvP. If you catch me live and you even have a question about this team or another team you'd like to try, just hop in and say, hey Jay, what do you think about this? I'll give you my honest, direct opinion and feedback. Even if it's Even if it might not be what you want to hear, I will be honest with you about it. I do really love this team. I might start to main this team honestly like I, I like it that much but yeah let me know what you think about the team in the comments below also if you built a zapdos yourself or even a shadow zapdos and you already have one and you're using it and your team is different let me know what the team is i want to try like as many zapdos teams as possible because obviously i love zapdos it's one of my favorites that's why i'm team instinct <laughs> But, but as always, battlers, thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you feel my vibe. Power punch the notification bell for all that PvP content. That is it for this video. We'll see you in the next video and or stream. Have a good stinking day.